They're such psychos. It is, what the heck month is it? We're still in May. May. Yeah, the end of May. End of May. Oh, and Memorial Day weekend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so for us here in the uh, United States, we celebrate Memorial Day. And actually, celebrate may not be the best way to put that, but uh, remembering those who have fallen for our freedom. We have a lot of things that you actually got accomplished this week. Share yes. with them what you've been doing. <laughs> you've been working. Um, well, I had our tomato plants were getting out of control again. And every time I tell myself I need to either tie them up or cage them or trellis type thing. And so I did some trellising in there. Hopefully. What'd you use? I used pieces of cattle panel. Had some pieces that we had cut. For doors. Yeah, and so they had the pokey part at the bottom and I just stuck those in as like stakes. Yeah, pokey part, is that the... I don't know. <laughs> is, is that related to Pokemon or... I don't, I don't, okay, all right. Yeah, so then I just used the green garden tape gun that we have and attach those to the paneling to trellis them up so at least we're not digging for tomatoes, hopefully. And they look pretty good so far. So I mean, far, we'll see how they yeah, how they work. It's Never working great. It, but... Haven't fallen over, we had some pretty good wins. Yeah, Yep. we had to finish our the water for the turkeys. Mm -hmm. so, so I got that. You finished. did it. I did it, yeah. So, so we had the bowl already attached, but mm -hmm. I ran the piping from the barrel to the water bowl. So you did all the PVC work to get from the barrel to the bowl, yes. basically. So yes. the only thing we have left, we need to paint that still. Otherwise we're good. The pipe, yeah. I also added some soaker tubes to the asparagus mm. end cap. Right, so we had four gallon per hour drip emitters there, but we wanted to make, because asparagus will take over that bed and we want it to. Need to spread that out. Yes, I did four of them in there. Mm -hmm. I just have to go back because I messed up on one of them, I think. Mm, oh yeah, where you cut it. Yeah. yeah. You need to cut, you need to, if you're gonna split it, you need to split before the emitter. Yeah, Yeah. and add another emitter. So then we had the septic worked on last week. It was just the filter right? Mm -hmm. But we had them put in higher risers so they come up to the surface, yeah. make it easier for us to service the filter and then get it pumped. <laughs> yes. But we had a lot of extra dirt that you moved around a little bit earlier this week and yeah. then we went back and we flattened it out this morning. Yep. And so now it actually looks pretty nice. Well, it's at except least that it's bare dirt. Somewhat flat <laughs> in our pasture. But fortunately, it was just the filter uh, that we couldn't get to. So now that we can get to it, we'll be able to take care of that ourselves. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We've got fruit that's ripening up all over the place. We're yeah. underneath one of them. This is one of our flavor delight apriums. But we had you were gonna try some different type of covering. Yeah, because our peach trees, we always net the entire thing. Well, we have a couple of peach trees that are younger that. It's the first year that we're letting them fruit, so they're not very heavy. And so I'm gonna try to just do organza bags on those. Which we haven't had success with before. So no. we, we did a video on that back on the old farm and netting works much better with peaches. It does. But we don't have enough netting to do all the peach trees at this point. <laughs> exactly. And they are really young, so we, we only have a handful of fruit. Yeah, I'm gonna try it, see if we can at least salvage a couple. See if that works. And then I started bagging the sat lap. Okay, yep. So, so that's a Satsuma Lappin's Cherry hybrid that we get mm -hmm. from Reed at RSI Growers. Yep. So I think it might be his, it may not be just his, but I know that is his thing. 
so is is that sat lap that one yeah mm -hmm. so they're starting to get a little red flush on them and so i started covering some of those and we haven't had that before so we don't know how those taste yet no but they seem a little bigger than the blue the um, sweet treat blueberry yes that we have this is the flavored delight apron that we're under here full of fruit we've got two of them that set fruit real heavy and the katie apricot mm -hmm. in fact you've been harvesting apricots earlier this week yes and we're starting to get bird damage we don't want to cover the trees so we need to clear as much of the ripe fruit as we can yeah Got some snacks. Now, go shoot that. I know, I know. Hey, Winston. Hey, Chris. If you guys watched the vlog last week, you know we talked a little bit about the fact that we had harvested our onions and our garlic. So what I wanna do is I wanna to cut to last week and show you the harvest of the onions that we have decided are our go-to onion and some garlic. So it's been a week since we did that harvest of our EE -E toy onions and our white California soft neck garlic. We've had it laying out in the beds and we're gonna go ahead and get that pulled out of the beds today. I wanna show you what it looks like after a week. So these are our EE -E toy onions. Now that is spelled I apostrophe I T O I. It's EE -E toy, at least that's my understanding. So these are multiplier onions. And when we were doing the harvest, you'll see that these grew into multiple heads, much like a garlic would. Now, when we planted these, they were tiny, tiny, much smaller than this as far as how they look. We planted two to three in each one of those areas and you can see it turned into a dozen or more. Now we plant these in the fall. We put them in at the same time as the garlic in October. And we are here in May seeing the top starting to fall over. We knew they were ready to harvest. 
Now with our EE Toy onions this year, we did get some seed heads on here, but that's not actually how you propagate them. Typically they're propagated by the bulbs. Now, one of the reasons why we really like this onion over a standard bulb onion is number one, they do fantastic in our environment, as good as it gets. You need almost completely unamended soil can still grow these onions as long as it's soft enough for them to multiply. It loves our weather, especially fall or monsoon timeframe through the spring, and then they're ready to harvest. Now, what we've done for the last week is just lay them out in the beds to let them start to cure. Now, our temperatures have been a little on the warm side for curing, but mid 90s is what we were seeing most of this week and extremely dry, no water at all. So no humidity, no rain. In addition, when we were pulling these, we laid the mulch layer back down. So they were sitting on top of our wood chip mulch. So there was no water underneath and a bit of airflow with those wood chips. And we continue to irrigate below them to maintain the soil itself inside each one of these beds. So now that the tops are mostly dry, we're gonna go ahead and get these trimmed up and set aside for storage. Some of these are gonna be for us to eat. Some of these are gonna be for us to plant in the fall. And some of these we may have available for folks come this fall. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you join our customer email list through the website. I just wanna thank you, Ashani, for letting us have those starts. You gave us two little pots. About this time last year, we planted those through the spring and summer, pulled them midsummer and planted them in the fall. And you can see what those two starts actually have turned into here basically a year later. So we have our three beds harvested. Now these are Etoy onions. There's two or three little heads in here. They'll remind you a lot of garlic in kind of the way they set. I would say the actual heads are a little bit larger than garlic, probably about the size of a small shallot. If you're cooking with these, obviously shallots or a recipe that calls for shallots, it's very similar. If you're using them for onions, you're obviously gonna need to use several of these little guys. If you're using a typical bulb, onion. The advantage to these, of course, as a home gardener is you can easily replicate these and multiply these over and over and over again. So basically you buy it once and you have them forever. As long as you keep a few for yourself to eat, keep a few to plant and keep a few to share. And you have something like this after a year. It actually is really nice under there. Mm -hmm. That's why the ducks like it so much under the trees. You can see. Yeah, especially a little bit of breeze getting up in here. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got another weekend behind us. Well, we're not done yet because we still are in the middle of harvest season, right? So we've got apricots that we have been freezing because we're going to try some apricot wine, which we've never done before. Mm -hmm. We can use them for smoothies. Yep, and we have the aprium and the apricot, but they're pretty much the same. Uh, even this year's size is about the same. So mm -hmm. the actual Katie apricots and the flavored delight apriums are pretty much the same size. And what I like about the Katie's this year is they seem a little firmer as long as you get them early. Yeah. Otherwise, they still just turn to mush where the... Um, the apriums are a little bit better yeah. that way. So hopefully the Etoy onions are gonna turn out okay. So we spread those out in the outbuildings. We need to let them cure a little bit more. Mm -hmm. The garlic, it's questionable. So we had a few that didn't do well. Kind of hit or miss for us with garlic. We've done good one year, not good in the next year. And this one looks like it's a mix between yeah. the two. So we'll see how those turn out, but got those all curing further in the outbuilding for the next week or two yes. until they're completely dry. Then we'll move them inside the house for okay. the rest of the summer. Okay. Yeah. That's all I got. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here on this newly established functioning farm in the Arizona desert and would love to see on a regular basis. If you have any questions or comments, those go in the comment section down below. <laughs> and our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's take your pig pen and get out of here. Yeah, that's me. I make a mess of everything. <laughs> you do. <laughs> What if I wasn't planning on giving the goats any of these? You need to share. What? We share stuff with them. It's called all of the hay. <laughs> hey, stop encouraging them. They're already yelling at me. You're not sharing. You guys are all spoiled. Oh, you look adorable, honey. <laughs> Okay, now, it's freaking me out a little bit that they're kind of going around my neck, like a lot. But you have that on. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Oh yeah, they're on my. They're trying to get in my face. Yeah. So they'll, so they'll bump you. You'll feel, feel them bump your hands. You'll feel them bump your face. Yeah. And that's just kind of their way of being like, hey, uh, you're not supposed to be in here. You said be in, like be in. Be you kind of hesitated on the be. <laughs> be. <in. laughs> Does it look like it? <laughs> it does. Oh, I'm staring right into that sun, though. I <laughs> Usually you have the problem with the sun in your eyes, but for you, with your beautiful blue eyes, we could be in the shade if the sun bothers you. I'm actually staring into it. <laughs> you have I to think go to a different We position? need to go to a different spot. This okay. is not going to work. I smell fantastic. I can't smell oh, them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Honey, they just smell like onions. It's disgusting. <laughs> Damn COVID. <laughs> Ruining your uh, experience of harvesting onions. <laughs> That's funny though, when I went to go to the bathroom over there, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, wow, this J. John doesn't smell. <laughs> yeah, it and does. I'm like, wait, I can't smell anything. <laughs> no, so. <laughs> it smells. Oh, yeah, it does smells. it? Yeah, I didn't smell anything. <laughs> Look at the creeper coming up behind us. Oh, hi, Thelma. Hi, Thelma. Now our temperatures have been about no 90. No 90? No 90. <laughs> no 90. So what do you think? Easier to cut my hair or these? <laughs> <laughs> probably these, huh? Well, these I guess would probably be easier, but yours I know what I'm doing. Okay, that's fair. 